everybody and here we are another mind stiller and I have a lot to still my mind about I don't know about you things are coming at me and all of us on this beautiful planet earth like gangbusters I'm not going to go into what it is but we all know that there are many many points of distraction confusion and evil there's evil out there the war in ukraine it's it's a very tense time but i choose to experience as much bliss as i possibly can in life because that's my choice and i know from having experimented that if i wanted to i could go deeply into all the troubles whether it's in my own little circle or if it's in this big huge picture I can go as deep as I want to and make myself as miserable as I can, but I choose to not do that because I have experienced what it's like to feel connected with the way things are going, the way things are meant to be, which is called acceptance, because I have developed awareness, and you can too. That's what mind stilling is all about becoming aware of awareness it's that simple really I mean <laughs> why complicate things when we can achieve wonderful relationships with ourselves first happiness accepting who we are not always putting ourselves down accepting when we have a little too much blubber on our butt, or in my case, you know, an upcoming surgical procedure, because I had a broken femur last year, and now I have to have more surgery. We can accept those things, because if we don't accept them, then we are choosing to be quite miserable. Yet we can allow ourselves a few moments or a few minutes of grief, like when I receive news about what's coming up for me sooner than later. I cried, I was depressed, I had to reach out to friends, and you know, it's okay. It's okay to be human. It's okay to grieve and to feel the loss of whether it's our health, our mobility, a relationship, or our safety. And, and then when we acknowledge our feelings, and say, okay, yeah, that's pretty stressful. That's pretty strong stuff. Then we can get down to business and choose to accept that life is just filled with never ending tumults and waterfalls of crises. And we can plant seeds in our mind. I call them thought seeds. It's really kind of funny. I'm thinking. I was hesitant to say it because just now I'm planting my spring garden and I'm planting real seeds, bok choy, you know, Swiss chard, lettuce, all those good things. And just like a thought, whether it's good or bad, it's a seed we plant. It, it is nurtured and it becomes stronger and it takes root just like a plant does in soil when you put a seed in of let's say lettuce it's just a little kernel kernel a hard little kernel but it's something it's real it could be a, as big as a poppy seed and you plant that in the soil and it could turn into an oak tree if you stuck around long enough to see it grow and nurture it and make sure nobody mows it down with their lawnmower or stomps on it with their boots, or eats it, like a little squirrel coming along. And in our minds, we have this fertile, juicy stuff called consciousness that is just like a garden. You plant a seed in your thought garden. It could be, I am not going to be bummed out about blah, blah, blah. I plant happiness and acceptance about blah, blah, blah. And you plant that seed and you 
And you do that with love, love. Like, just like when I plant seeds in my garden, I'm not in a bad mood. I'm just smelling the earth, enjoying feeling it with my hands or through my gloves, and happy to take away the bad things that are weeds that could encroach upon the nurturement of my beautiful seeds. And so just like a thought seed goes into our mind, planting happiness rather than fear or loneliness or confusion or anger or any of those negative things which are all different mask of fear because fear is the opposite of love and you're either in fear whether it's anger or confusion or self-doubt or you know self-depredation or you're in a state of love starting with self-love if you don't like the fact that you have a few pounds on you then okay stop eating so many potato chips if you don't like the relationship you're in uh, evaluate it and see what are the good points what are the bad points and you know maybe it's time to make some changes it's okay this is life life is about change <laughs> oh, so Thought seeds are very important when you're wishing and wanting and needing some peace in your life. You plant the seed in your consciousness, in the fertile, wonderful thought garden that we all have, which is our mind, not the brain, not the, not the organ that knows everything from the encyclopedia and from the web and from the, you know the bot chats and all that stuff no knowledge is not the same as true understanding which can be called wisdom what's the difference well there's lots of people who know facts they can recite all the you know particles and theories and you know universes and and all the different facts of life. But do they really understand that we, each one of us, not just special people, but each one of us gets to choose whether we are experiencing bliss or misery, even in the midst of war, poverty, discrimination, you know, illness, even on the way to saying goodbye to life. I have experienced all these myself. I have not died, but I've been with several people and I have experienced what it's like to choose the difference between an easy way of saying, wow, this was really a trip here. I'm ready for the next floor. Or, no, it can't be. I'm resisting. Oh, it's not good to resist what is, it's better to put on our angel wings and have a smile and just say, okay, you know, this is energy, this is mindfulness, this is thought, this is consciousness, this is being in the flow with the divine. And it really does come down to your choice. You can either say, no, I don't believe it, or, hmm, I kind of felt like that a little bit at times in my life, maybe when I was a kid climbing a tree and looking at the sky and feeling connected to everything. And we can have that feeling all throughout our life. doesn't matter what age you are or what stage you're at in your cultivation of your thought garden. You can be as happy as you wish to be and you can be as courageous as you wish to be in one by one the things that come up in the process of acquiring happiness, which, you know, in the terms of yoga, this is called purification. But in terms of life, it's just called getting to know yourself. Little by little, things come up. And they can all be resolved by stilling the mind. They don't have to be thought out. They don't have to be 
analyzed on a couch or however a shrink chooses to analyze you or help you. You can tap that inner part of yourself which is quiet and peaceful and connected to everything in the universe, multiverse. The oneness that we are is truly yours for the wanting. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to say, oh, well, I'm just an ordinary. No, you are a person who is alive and you have consciousness. <laughs> now, a lot of people just want to be entertained in life and that's okay. I mean, I accept that that's true. I used to be one of those people too, to be entertained, to, just to always keep my mind busy and active and you know, don't really get to know the essence of what and who I am. But since I've been on this path of discovery, after my life of oh, pretty much out there, I wouldn't call it debauchery, but in a dream, it was shown me, shown me that, that, that the word pretty much sums up where I was at. <laughs> But that's who I was. I had to explore the material, the altered states of this and that. And the best, the highest, the most profound experience that anyone can have in life is their own natural state of consciousness that is still and connected to your breath and connected to the oneness that the breath represents. The breath is the bridge. The breath is like a swing or a vehicle that once you tap the magic of conscious breathing you go deeper into your own being. You go higher into the possibilities of life's experiences. And it's all within yourself. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to attend workshops or even listen to Mind Stillers or anybody else's videos. Once you acknowledge that this is true and then you start experiencing over and over the bliss of going within, deep within, comfortably within. And sometimes on this journey things do come up. Intellectually our mind is always, oh but what about, well you just look at it like, like a cloud passing on the screen of your big monitor called consciousness, mindfulness, aliveness. You watch it and you don't engage in it. You don't talk to it. And you dive in between the clouds of Maybe a thought, maybe a feeling, a sensation, a remembrance, and you're diving in your consciousness between these clouds of other things that you don't have to even look at. You can go around it. A good example is in my early days of stilling my mind, aka meditation, I used to get really bummed out by the, a dripping faucet. And I learned through trial and error that it did not have to interrupt my wish to be more still, more quiet, more at rest with who I was and what I wanted to achieve by stilling the mind and instead of getting up and being 
pissed off that the faucet was leaking and going over and you know trying to wrestle with it or put something underneath it like a sponge to quiet it which we all try to do to make the environment as conducive as possible even with children around just go in a quiet closet just be quiet for a moment just a breath or two but when I learned that I didn't have to get up and close the door or stop the faucet but I could actually take my awareness and move it around and or, you know different ways of like diving with your mind diving and dancing with consciousness you can go around disturbances you can do that it's really quite amazing the more you practice stilling your mind the better you get at it the easier it becomes the more likely it becomes a part of your everyday reality as you're dealing with troubles and challenges and and all sorts of things that make you just get upset you can bring those remnants those little sections of peace that you experience in meditation you can bring them into your day-to-day -day consciousness and you do have the benefit overall if you put in a little bit of time in practice i hope i've inspired you and i know i have to still my mind whenever i start thinking about this upcoming complicated surgery i'm going to have to have probably maybe after getting another opinion or two and it's you know it's a very common hip replacement people get them all the time they say oh it's a cakewalk but you know surgery is surgery and it's just one more challenge in life that we have to deal with those of us who have gone through the trauma of either breaking bones or whatever. In my case, it was breaking a bone. So all of us have challenges. There's not a single person alive who is A-OK. -okay. At any given moment, they may experience sections of bliss, sections of happiness. and But even people who appear to have it all together and are so incredibly happy on the internet. Some of them are desperately unhappy people, as evidenced by the recent uh, demise of, of Twitch a lot. I was a big fan of Twitch a lot, the dancer. It was a very sad day, but you cannot tell if a person is out there smiling away and all this stuff is happening and their lives look so together, but inside each one of us we're humans we have to accept our emotions and greet them as if they were signposts about what to do next if we're feeling unhappy it's our job to somehow find a way to ba balance out the unhappiness with either acceptance or make ourselves a little more happy. So that's a challenge that we all have. And I'm here to share mind stillers because that's, it works for me. It, that's the best way that I have ever found when I'm feeling off balance. I go into the mind stilling and what happens is you come to this beautiful place right in the middle that's called the middle way by Buddhists, it's called equilibrium, also serenity, acceptance. You just accept what is, and you don't get hysterically happy about it, but you don't get devastatingly bummed out either. You accept, and the middle way is a beautiful way, and it is accessible to all of us. Follow your breath. Slow down your mind. 
plant some beautiful thought seeds and watch your thought garden grow with every breath, with every moment, with every day. I send my love. Om Namah Shivaya. Mm-hmm. <laughs>